off the edge episode 37 but most importantly it is the last episode before we kick off the nfl season you're joining uh jake ellenbogen here and cameron lynch my lovely co-host over there who is on his honeymoon but he yeah. ball does not stop for him he's he's going out of his way uh to to be here and we are going to be previewing all the games here we got three primetime games very exciting primetime games we got some divisional matchups um but before we do all of that just want to let you guys know that bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs this season get the latest odds lines and matchup reports for baseball boxing golf and more bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action remember to use our promo code believe to receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online where the game starts cam people can also play fantasy football with us and they can also do some pick them so if you like a certain player and you want to follow him say thursday night if you didn't know patrick mahomes is a free square and what i mean by that is if he has more than 0.5 yards passing you win that okay so let's just let everyone know right away and i'm gonna you know send it over to you now uh for the the promo and what they can get out of that but that's a pretty big thing there pretty big promotion i appreciate the education and some more education here from underdog fantasy you can start playing fantasy football on Underdog Fantasy today. Users will receive a 100% deposit, match up to $100 if they use our promo code OTE at sign up. You can click the link in the description to get started today. So, Cam, we're going to dive right into it. No holds barred yeah. here, all right? Kansas City Go. Chiefs are opening up the season, the defending Super Bowl champions at Arrowhead, taking on the Detroit Lions who were just about as hot as any team at the end of last year. They just missed the playoffs, and now they're on that revenge tour. They didn't feel great about the end of last season, but, hey, they, they've built something up here. Um, the big news here is Travis Kelsey, okay? He hyperextended his knee the day we're recording this, okay? He hyperextended his knee in practice. You don't get a turnaround time that quickly with a hyperextension, okay? So I don't think he's going to play Cam. I don't see it. I think that's way too much pressure. And if anything, he'd just be dead weight out there being pretty much a decoy. So Cam, I'm going to say it right now. I think the Detroit Lions are going to win this game. I had the Chiefs before the Kelsey news. I think Patrick Mahomes is amazing. And, you know, he's the best quarterback in the league and can make things happen no matter who he's throwing to. But let's not just uncover. Let's not just keep this thing as eh, it's just Travis Kelsey. I mean, he's the best tight end in football. Uh, I think the Lions last time we saw Jared Goff versus Patrick Mahomes. I don't have to tell you 54 51 fireworks on Monday Night Football between the Rams and Chiefs at the Coliseum. I got the Lions in this one. I got him uh, by a field goal. I think it's going to be a close game. And I think Jared Goff is going to lead a game winning drive at Arrowhead to upset the defending Super Bowl champion Chiefs. Like it, Jay. Keep it hot, right? Football is kicking off. Let's get it in with some of these hot takes, right? Um, and then when you mentioned Travis Kelsey, immediately, Jake, I went to my phone, hit up Google, and I'm looking up who is the backup, who is the next man up. We always talk about this. Um, Noah Gray. Noah Gray's going to have, have to step up. Blake Bell's going to have to step up. Hey, whether you're blocking more, adding more protection, so Patrick Mahomes can figure out how to get that ball out to his fabulous wide receivers, I think that might be important. Isaiah Pacheco's going to have to step up a little bit too, Jake, right? The pass game is going to be a little bit different now, so Isaiah Pacheco, whether you're catching out of the backfield, line him up in the slide and cause some problems for some of those linebackers and DBs, <laughs> but really, Jake, I think at the end of the day, Andy Reid is still coaching football. And at the end of the day, whether Patrick Mahomes is playing, whether Travis Kelsey is playing, I do think Andy Reid is that good to win football games with them or without them. So in saying that, I won't be disrespectful to the Chiefs, Jake. Not saying that you are, right? But the Lions are those that sleeper team, right? The, even the Seattle Seahawks, we'll get to them later. These are some of the teams that are the boogeyman, right, for teams like the Chiefs. So. What I will say, I do think it's going to be a tight game like you mentioned. You know, maybe a, uh, you know, 27 to 30 type game, three-point game. A lot of the football games are decided by field goals and extra points. So, I think it's going to be a tight game just like you mentioned, Jake. But 
I do think Andy Reid is too good of a coach to let this team slip first game of the season with this news bearing. So the Lions, though, excited to see him, Jake. I'm excited to see Jack Campbell specifically. I'm a linebacker. So I'm excited to see what he's going to do against Patrick Mahomes. Will he get tossed up uh, on, you know, on, as he's playing defense as Patrick Mahomes is going to look him off multiple times? I think so, right? I think I'm going to call it right now, Jake. Patrick Mahomes is going to be looking one way, he's going to throw the ball the other way, and Jack is going to look kind of crazy. It's going to be a welcome to the NFL moment against Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to call that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, you know, welcome to the NFL moment, um, you know, could come of that. And I think there's a rookie on the Lions, Jameer Gibbs, who I think people are going to expect to kind of have that moment where, I don't know, this might be too big for him this early on. I think he's the X factor in this game. And I think Marvin Jones is going to turn back the clock in this one. I think people are not ready to see Marvin Jones. He's back with the uh, back with the Lions. I know he doesn't have Stafford, but I think they're going to, you know, rally around him and, and he's going to rally around them because Jamison Williams is out. We talked about, you know, the gambling there. So, uh, yeah, I have the Lions and you got the Chiefs. I love that. We now move. OK, we move over to the south here, uh, a division that, you know, very well. And uh, the Atlanta Falcons at home are taking on the Carolina Panthers. And let me just first say, I think the Panthers win the division, but I don't trust rookie quarterbacks in the first game of the season. I think the Panthers have great coaching staff. I think Miles Sanders with his 1200 rushing yards last year, very impressive, good signing, underrated signing. They got Adam Thielen. They have guys there. Hayden Hurst, a good offensive line. Uh, I like their defense. I really like Atlanta in this game. I like them at home. Ritter's already gone through that. Okay. He's not a rookie here, right? But you got B. John Robinson. You got another thousand yard running back as your backup in Tyler Algier. You're talking about Kyle Pitts under 400 yards last year after his first season going over a thousand. Okay. Looking like one of the best tight ends in the league. I believe he is one of the best tight ends in the league. And I believe the Falcons new look defense going out and getting Jesse Bates going out and getting Caden Ellis. I think this Falcons team is going to win this game by a touchdown. So I have 27, 20 Atlanta uh, at the, uh, at the Falcons. Yeah. I like that, Jake. I mean, this is a divisional matchup division matchup. It counts for two, right? A lot of times when people say this, once the season starts, the division matchup counts as two because once week 17 comes along, you got the wild card, you got this and got that. The thing that separates these teams from making the dance and making the playoffs, that's what every team here wants to do, are these division matchups. So the Panthers are about because they're kicking it off strong. They got, I'm going to go 23 to 21. It's going to be a close game. Um, and what I'll say this, what I'll say here is when it comes to the Falcons, when it comes to the Panthers, I agree with you. The Panthers are going to win this division. This division isn't the strongest division. But I do think the Panthers have a great opportunity to do that. I'm excited to see Bijan, Jake. I'm excited to be, see Bijan. Um, you talk about just um, sleeper players. I'm going to go with Taylor Heineke, Jake. It might not be this game, Jake. But at some point, just mark my words, got the crystal ball. Taylor Heineke is going to be that guy for the Falcons. I know I said it multiple times, but just believe in me. Just know. I mean, and the reason why I say this, Jake, he played high school football there. He's back home, so I do think if he if he gets a chance to step on that field, I don't think anybody's going to get it back. I, I think he's going to own it. But going back to the guys that are on the field, I'm excited to see B. John Robinson um, play football. I'm excited to see this offensive line for the Falcons move people, right? I know we went over in the offseason basically our number one offensive line, three top, our top ten, and the Falcons offensive line was was up on there. We got Bergeron as well coming out of Syracuse. I got a shout-out to my Syracuse guys. So He's one really of my little sleepers little. this year, Cam. I like him at guard. I like him at good. guard. Good, good. And I, I'm hoping he does well, right? We'll see. Can he play center? Can he play tackle? We all can we cover the Rams and believe in Rams as well. And we know the offensive line has to stay healthy for a team to be successful. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing that offensive line go. And then going to the Panthers, right? They have the number one overall draft pick in Bryce Young. So Let's see what he can do, Jake. Um, we talk about this division. We talk about Drew Brees being that shorter quarterback for the Saints. And, you know, now the Panthers have that shorter quarterback that's going to be crushing him. Not saying he's going to be a Drew Brees, but I'm looking forward to seeing him take the helm there and playing football uh, for the Carolina Panthers. And then you got our guy Burns on the other side, Jake. I know he's one of your favorite rushers. So I'm excited to see him get after the quarterback um, and, and seeing this Panthers team 
move forward. There's been a lot that's been going on with that organization, so it's, it's, I'm looking forward to see them move forward here, here this season. And now as we move forward here, the Bengals and Browns are playing. I got the Bengals in this one on the road. I just think right now this is the best team in all football. I, I've said that. I think they're winning the Super Bowl. And anything can happen in a rivalry game, so I'm not going to say that, you know, a Christmas miracle can't come in September for the Browns. But um, I really like the Bengals in this one. I understand there are people that are concerned about Burroughs injuries and whatnot, but I think this defense is good. And I think when you look, uh, you know, obviously Joe Mixon can run the football. I like what they did going out and, uh, you know, getting Chase Brown as well as, you know, Chris Evans in the camp that he had, a guy that kind of everyone forgot about, Mr. Captain America there. But you got <laughs> Jamal. Mar Chase, you got T Higgins, you got Chuck Sizzle, right? We talked about it. You know, Charlie Jones, the rookie that I'm very high on. And then, of course, Tyler Boyd. And my sleeper here, Cam, Irv Smith Jr. People have forgotten about Irv Smith. He got hurt last year, didn't really do anything with the Vikings, had some injuries. If he stays healthy with Joe Burrow, this is a very, very good situation for him. I think he could have a really good season. I got the Bengals in this one by a couple touchdowns. Okay. Oh, a couple touchdowns, Todd. Yeah, I like that, Jake. I think it's going to be a probably a two-touchdown game on this one, I'm going to call it. Um, you talk about your sleeper. I'm going to go with Tyler Boyd for mine, Jake. I know Tyler Boyd. He's been in the league for a minute. Um, I played against him when I was at Syracuse, and he's put he's went to work on it. So I have a feeling, you know, you got T. Higgins and you got Jamar Chase. They're going to be double. They're going to have extra coverage. So someone who's going to have to get open is Tyler Boyd, um, and I know he can do that. And they talk about Joe Burrow, right, getting healthy. I think that's really important. I know earlier in the preseason he hurt that leg and whatnot. So I know t- I know guys going to be going for it. Miles Garrett is going to be licking his chops knowing that there's that lower body injury. So not that we want guys to hurt players, but you do know when there's a weakness for a player, you have to exploit it um, as a defense. And so Miles Garrett just being all world, everything, Jake, it's really cool to see a guy like that. You know, jumping on a 50-foot box, right, tackling people, um, you know, the antics during Halloween where he has different quarterbacks on, like, a Reaper jacket with tombstones. Really fun, and I'm excited to see what he's going to do this year, Jake. You talk about the running back room. You got Joe Mixon. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him run that football, Jake. And then also on the other side, Nick Chubb as well. Someone that doesn't – he doesn't really speak too much, right? He doesn't see him on first take or anything like that, but – my man is strong as all get out, right? You see him in the offseason squatting with freaking five plates on the side, power cleaning, just doing crazy stuff. So I'm excited to see him. They've been Joe Koo as well, Jake, someone that we talked about, you know, physically becoming a better yeah. athlete right in front of our eyes. So really excited to see those guys. And then you talk about some of the guys on the defense, Denzel Ward and Barton Emerson uh, for the Browns. So, yeah, man, this is going to be a good matchup. But like you said, it's going to be like a two-touchdown game, and uh, and the Bengals are going to make the dance this year. I can see them in the playoffs as well. So then looking at this upcoming one here, we got the Jaguars and Colts, another divisional uh, you know, rivalry game. Um, the Jaguars, when they weren't very good, still had the Colts number. This is just one of those they are that – I mean, they're they're basically kryptonite for the Colts, unfortunately. I know this is at Lucas Oil, but again, and I love Anthony Richardson as a prospect. I think Anthony Richardson is going to end up being a potential star down the road. I don't think it starts week one. I think he has some serious issues. You talk about Trayvon Walker. You talk about Josh Allen. You got your guy Andre Sisco in the secondary. I mean, there are guys all over that defense that I am concerned about. Um, and there are guys that I didn't even mention and like Devin Lloyd. And I just think this is a recipe for disaster week one for Anthony Richardson. It's almost like you should be starting Gardner Minshew against his former team. See if maybe there's a revenge factor there. But I'm not going to hate anytime you start a rookie. I believe in getting the rookie's feet wet. Um, Let him fail and let him learn from this. But I don't think this is going to be great. There's no Jonathan Taylor. You're going to be relying on likely a rookie running back, um, you know, who I like in Evan Hull. But still, I just don't feel like this is a great situation. And I think the Jaguars, who are, are they're feeling themselves right now. They just got Calvin Ridley in the building. They traded for him last year. People forgot he was on the roster. And now I think he's going to be their best receiver. So a uh, lot to like on the Jaguars. Your guy Tank Bigsby could even have a role in this offense. Uh, he had a really good 
preseason. So watch out for the Jaguars. I haven't win this division. And, you know, we'll see what happens with the playoffs, how far they can go. But um, this is a good football team. And they were, you know, the Colts kryptonite before when they were a bad football team. So I'll take the, the Jaguars in likely a blowout here. Okay, yeah, and <laughs> like the blow it, I'll go, I'll go two two touchdowns, Jake, as well. I think when things can get ugly, I'll just say two touchdowns and probably more, but it'll be a two touchdown game, um, Jake, maybe even three, right? You talked about blowout, just 21 and call it a day. Um, I think Doug Peterson's going to be the reason why. Uh, Doug Peterson's an excellent coach, and you think about great coaches when you when it comes to teams that aren't as great, you have a rookie quarterback. You, you dominate them. You get those easy wins because on the back, and we talk about this, wild card time comes, you have those wins in the bag. If you have injuries that come up, it's okay because you dominated, you know, those teams early on in the season. Stuff fast is really important. And so I do think the Jags are going to take this one away. Um, you got to talk about Andre Sisco. I think he's going to, he's going to be my sleeper for this one. Jake Syracuse guy as well. You talk about Anthony Richardson being a rookie quarterback. I think if you're a DB for the Jaguars, you're licking your child. Pops, like, like, hey, this guy, he can do backflips. He can do, he can throw the ball 100 miles, 100 miles an hour. Um, but can he be accurate, right? Can he put the ball where you, where you need it to be? Can he score a touchdown? So um, I think I'm, if I'm Andre Sisko, I'm looking at my chops for sure. I'm going to make sure that I disguise, right, from that Jaguars defense, I show one thing, but actually present the other. So I think that's really important. You see, and Jake, I'm really looking forward to seeing seeing him get active. Um, just that backfield. We talk about Tank Bixby. Um, you know, just clicking on all cylinders. So um, this Jags team is looking dangerous. The Colts, though, talk about Anthony Richardson, uh, Zaire Franklin. I got to shout him out. Another Syracuse guy um, emerging in this in this in the NFL and as a linebacker. So the Colts have their hands full, Jake. They have their hands full with the Jaguars, but the Jaguars win this one. I think by three touchdowns. Yeah, and, and I, I have to say, I haven't won seven games. I think it'll get better, but I think early on, they are signing up for the growing pains here with Anthony Richardson, and that's okay. You know, I think it's going to get better, and that that's how that's what I'll say about that. Moving on one. here. Yeah, it is week <laughs> so. one, right? The, the overreaction Monday is going to happen, and we are going to have a blast with it. But uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you're Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Cam, I, I have to say, I don't like Tampa Bay Buccaneers in this one. I got to tell you, I, I like Baker. Okay. I think Baker's going to have a better year than people give him credit for, but I really like the Vikings in this game. Um, you know, first off they're at home, one of the best stadiums in all of sports, I'd say probably top five and definitely top three in football. Um, but that's neither here nor there. There's no Dalvin cook. There's going to be people on the scene because of it. Um, I'm not really worried about that. I think the biggest, you know, acquisition for them that kind of defeats that is getting rid of Ed Donatel, the, the former defensive coordinator and going out and getting Brian Flores. I think that defense is now going to be chomping at the bit. I think they are going to have some level of ferocity that we haven't seen. And I think they're going to be successful this year. Get Kirk Cousins a little bit more opportunities to throw the rock. And I think, you know, uh, Alexander Madison, I think is a solid running back. He's not amazing, but he doesn't have to be amazing. And when you went out and got Addison, I, I think, you know, Jordan Addison with, you know, we already Justin Jefferson is already one of the best, if not the actual best uh, wide receiver in football. And he's only what, 23, 24 years old. You get Addison now. It's going to be crazy over there, you know, with what Kirk Cousins is working out with. And now they just signed TJ Hawkinson to a record setting deal. I, there's a lot to play with. So it's time for Captain Kirk. A lot of people are on his side now following the quarterback uh, Netflix special. So we'll see. He's got a lot of fans. Uh, they got a lot of weapons. I know Dalvin's out. Doesn't mean that they're out for the count. So I got the Vikings in this one, uh, 31 to 17. Went by two, two TDs on this one. I don't think it's going to be a really close one. Um, thankfully, they're playing – uh, in Minnesota, like I said, that great stadium is fabulous. Um, looks, looks like a Viking ship. Thankfully, they're not playing in Tampa, Jake, because I would maybe go a little bit different if they were playing in Tampa because of the heat. That heat, I mean, it's September, right? And it's probably 95, maybe 110, maybe 105 with humidity. So I would call it maybe a different game, maybe one, one score touch, one score game difference, maybe a three point game. But I'm going to go two. It's going to be cool in there. It's going to be nice out in Minnesota. Um, you talked about Captain Kirk, Jake, watching quarterback on, on Netflix. Um, I, th I think I talked about it. My buddy from Michigan State, one of my, he was my best man at my wedding. 
Andre Sims play that Michigan State with Kirk, and he said, I want to do a walk for Kirk. And so seeing Kirk, uh, I'm like, okay, I'm a fan as well. So I, I like the Vikings running the show there. And then you just talked about the coaching staff, Jake. Um, you talked about the coaching staff at the Vikings. They have an excellent coaching staff. And at the end of the day, you know, Kevin O'Connell, Brian Flores, like that's that's a monster in itself. So um, I do think that this Vikings team is going to be the better half of, of the Buccaneers. And you talked about Baker Mayfield stepping into this position. Let's see what you're going to do, young man, right? You talk about uh, failing fast for Anthony Richardson. I think Baker's going to have to fail fast here because it's a new team, a new vibe. Um, he's found some success with the Rams a little bit, right, when he first stepped into the field. But he's going to have to fail fast here at the Buccaneers. So i um, excited to see how he does there, right? Kyle Trask probably going to be looking at the bit, um, you know, to get into that football game. So we'll see what he does there. It's good to see that Sean Tucker, right, is a backup running back for the Buccaneers. That's your guy. Series. <laughs> that's my guy, Jake. That's my guy. So it's good to see him, see him there, and hopefully he finds some some run um, uh, on the team. And then you talk about the Buccaneers defense: Devin White, Levante, David, Jake. One of my favorite linebacker tandems um, in the league. I would say close to the 49ers have a dang good linebacker tandem as well. So, but this this group is, is strong. They've been to the Super Bowl before, so I would like to see Devin White get back to where he was at Super Bowl year, Jake. I'm gonna call. My sleeper in this game, Levante David, right? The trust, the trust. I want to say trusty Dusty. He's not Dusty, but our guy that's tried and true has been at the Buccaneers, and I would hope would be a Hall of Famer at some point. Um, but Levante David, I think, is going to show up and show out for this team. He has to. He has to because I think you know, they're going to be on the they're going to be on the field a long time. I think Baker Mayfield's going to have to have a couple three and outs, and I think that defense is going to have to hold hold the uh, hold the Buccaneers down. Carlton Davis is going to have his hand full. <laughs> Super Bowl this week. So, but I, I have the Vikings take up uh, by two touchdowns this game. So my guy, Bobby Stanley, we call him prop holiday. Uh, he's really good with all the, the betting and, and whatnot. I, I'm going to I'm going to take a play out of his playbook here. My sleeper is Johnny Munt. I think he sees the end zone. Um, nice. Kevin O'Connell called him the best number three tight end in all of football. So, well, I, I think that's somebody that's going to use. And, and I don't know if you saw the viral clip going around when he just schooled Buda Baker. I mean, that's an all pro yeah. safety right there. I, I think I think Monk gets in the end zone. But, yeah, I have the Vikings winning that. Moving on, we got the Saints and Titans here. Um this is interesting, right? Because the Titans, I don't know what to make of. They got a good coach. They got some good defensive pieces. They got Derrick Henry, love Tajay Spears. I wasn't sold, and I know you know how I feel about this. I wasn't sold on keeping Tannehill as the starter. I thought they should have gone out and, and gone, you know, and got somebody. Uh, but I like what the Saints did. They did go out and get somebody. They went out and got Derek Carr. So I love that, first off. Second, I think Olave. I think if Michael Thomas stays healthy, this is looking decent here. I like the defense already. I got the Saints. They're at home. I got them by... I'm going to say 26, 23. I think it'll be a close game. I'm not saying the Titans are terrible, although everyone saw my win loss predict prediction on them. I'm not as high on them, but I think they'll lose a lot of close games. And the saints is the one that I have there. Yeah, I'm going to go 24, 21 saints. You, we, we talked about this before. I talked about the saints, you know, I was like, ah, Sean Payton is when he was talking crazy, you know, about the, the Broncos and Nathaniel Hack. And I was like, ah, the saints, you're going, you're, third in the division, right? You know, and as time progressed, they got my, like, ooh, I might have to change my tone here a little bit. I think the Saints, they have something going on. And you think about Jameis Winston being the back of quarterback and him doing as well as he's been doing the preseason and moving things forward. I like how things are looking. Um, you, you think about just the Saints organization in general, right? You, they've been a dangerous team, anybody that they play. And so, um, you know, starting with their defense at the end of the day, their defense has been a, a group to reckon with. You know, with Cam Jordan there, uh, that, that 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 captain position playing defensive end, he's going to cause some problems. Tim going to have to run for his life, right? At the end of the day, I think you know, with that defensive line, the linebacker core, the DBs, you got Lattimore back there as well. I think they're going to shut some things down. And so, and when it comes to the Titans, you think about Brable we're talking about the coaching staff there, excellent. Um, what he's done in the preseason, allowing another coach to take the head coaching spot while he's supporting him. I just think the character and the culture, like you said, they're not going to be, they're not going to get blown out of games. They're just missing some pieces to get over the hump there. But I do think their culture and what they're building at in Tennessee, I think is really important with the new GM there and everything like that. So I, I like Tennessee. It's just, 
you know, the Saints, they're they're looking good, Jake. They're looking good, and I, I do think that they'll win this game. Like I said, I, I'm going to go uh, – I think I said 23-20, to 20, but, uh, yeah, that this will be a close game. Yeah, and then moving on, we got one of the games of the week, I would say, um, maybe the game of the week, the Steelers taking on the 49ers. I understand not a lot of people are very high on the Steelers for whatever reason. Cam, I think they're one of the scariest teams in the whole field. Um, I have them winning this game. I think the 49ers, who a lot of people will say are Super Bowl contenders, I'm not against that. Um, I think when you look at the Steelers, first off, Kenny Pickett looked incredible in preseason. I understand it's preseason, um, but hearing you know everything in camp and whatnot, Kenny Pickett already showed you he has that if factor last year. When, he, when push came to shove and he had to make a play in the moment, as a rookie, he was able to do that. That's something I look for. You know, you can't measure that, right? And so Kenny Pickett's got it, and I think he takes you know a step forward. You got Najee Harris. You're starting to hear about this emergence of Jalen Warren, this running back that no one was talking about. Now he might have a role. You talk about the receivers. We're really high on Allen Robinson. Think you know essentially he didn't. He he. The Rams got nothing for him. He is going to be a good player this year. I know you've been talking about him for a while. Uh, Robinson. You got Deontay Johnson. You got George Pickens, who I'm very high on as well, and Calvin Austin. Then you have Pat Fryermuth, who's a top ten tight end. You got an offensive line that's now uh, improved going out and getting Sumalo in the offseason from the Philadelphia Eagles. The defense, I feel like everyone forgot about TJ Watt. He's back, by the way. Cam Hayward. You got Alex Highsmith. Do you go out and you get, um, you know, uh, Joey Porter's kid, Joey Porter Jr. You know, you have Patrick Peterson, who was a hell of a player last year. I know he's getting up there, but he's still a really good player. Minka Fitzpatrick. This defense coupled with what they have on offense i understand the niners are the niners brock purdy coming out week one there's film on the guy now okay there's film on him he's not at home i like the steelers in this game i think they win by 10 i'm gonna go 30 to 20 yeah yeah i think the steelers when it comes to what they bring to the table i think they're spooky like you mentioned the 49ers they are solid now. They are their defense is even spookier. But I do think you talked about TJ Watt. You got Bosa. Which one would you pick, Jake? I think he hit a flip of coin. I think I'm going TJ Watt, right? I think at one point he was up for MVP in the league. You know, there's Bosa might not even play. Football. <laughs> and both, exactly. Bosa might not even play. Exactly. So the fact that TJ Watt is playing football, I think that's really important. And you think about just coaching, Mike Tomlin, you think about a guy that's making playoffs every year. I think I'm going to take Tomlin over, you know, over Shanahan. Shanahan's seen the Super Bowl. He's been, he's been there. But I think Tomlin, I think about he has that grizzle, Jake. He has that grizzle. I think it's been cool to see this offseason some of the players speak about him and talk about some of his isms and Tomlinisms. And I'm like, okay, these people believe the table. So, um, I think that's really important that the players believe in Tom Lynn and what he's bringing. Um, and I, I like the Steelers, Jake, just kind of what, what they're doing. Um, like I said, this offseason, this whole year. Um, and, yeah, man, the four, it's going to be a tight game, though, Jake. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this a three-point a three point game. That's what I call it. I could see 30 to 27. I think – I mean, it really depends on what kind of Brock Purdy you're going to get. Um, you know, I really have been open about my thoughts on that. I think he's still a solid player. I just don't buy that everything's going to be smooth sailing, especially against your first game of the year coming off this UCL injury and you're playing the Steelers defense. I mean, that is just at, at, on the road, nonetheless. You know, and Bosa might not play. Um, I will say Christian McCaffrey is the key to that offense. Uh, Brandon Ayuk is another key to that offense. Those guys are going to have to step up. Um, Ayuk is going to have to get open because Brock Purdy's not throwing into, you know, double coverage or anything. Like, you know, he's not throwing it up. He, he needs to make sure you are open. So I think Ayuk, who can create that separation, gives him a shot. Obviously, Kittle. Um, Debo, he's looking for a little bit of a comeback season here. So we'll see what ends up yeah. happening. But yeah, I think uh, you and I both have the Steelers in this one. We'll see what ends up happening. But this is. Uh, I'm excited about Hufunga. I'm excited to see him play ball. I think Pickens are have to figure out how to be very active with the football because if not, Hufunga's going to be taking that ball the other direction, you know, and to strike the band up because he is an absolute ball player. 
and he's got to know exactly where the two linebackers, Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw are at all times. They both were in our top 10, I believe, uh, for linebackers. So, uh, going to be, going to be a tough game, but I think the Steelers are ready for it. I think this is going to be a season where we look back on like, Hey, this, this feels nice to be right about this one. Cause a lot of people are out on the Steelers and I don't know why. Um, but here's one thing I'll say, we move on to the Washington commanders and Cardinals game. I don't even know what to make about this because I'm not convinced that the Cardinals aren't tanking here. Um, and I, it sounds like they might have another rookie starter starting on this slate, Clayton Toon. They haven't decided, mm-hmm. right? But Jonathan Gannon has made it known that he thinks Clayton Toon is ready. Um, I don't. I think Washington is going to eat him alive, um, you know, like just a ribeye steak. Um, but you know, I, I think Washington has a lot of talent all over the place. I mean, every which way. And I love that they went out and got, um, you know, the, the Emmanuel, uh, I totally forgot his name. The, uh, the corner that I love so much, um, you know, but I think you have guys like cam curl, you have guys. I don't know if chase young's going to play, but Jonathan Allen, Dayron Payne, Montez sweat, they're going to be in his grill all day long. I mean, we already know what the Cardinals feel about this team. Hopkins is gone. You know, they go out and and they trade away. I mean, for really nothing at all, they go and they trade away Simmons to the Giants. Um, And and they trade another guy away too. uh, you know, their tackle. So it's like, I don't really know what to make of the Cardinals, especially on the road. And I got to tell you something. The commanders have a sleeper here. There are two sleepers. The first one I'm going to say is Jahan Dotson. He had seven touchdowns last year. Most people aren't even talking about him. Everyone talks about Terry McLaurin, and he's, I think, underrated. But Jahan Dotson's going to have a a banged-up season. The other guy is the quarterback, the signal caller, Sam Howell. Like, I think Sam Howell can play. And I think he's going to be in for a surprising season if you're not ready for it can catch you by surprise. So um, I like Washington in this one in a blowout. I'm going to say it right now. They got the running back room. You talk about Brian Robinson, uh, you know, Antonio Gibson. I don't know if Chris Rodriguez will get into it, but we talked about him uh, on this show before Chris Rodriguez. I like the pick there. I really like where the commanders are headed. Um, you know, and I think this is a game where they can establish themselves early on. It doesn't matter that it's the Cardinals. If they win by a big margin, it's going to really give them a nice little juice, a nice little boost into week two, which I think they need in a tough division. Yeah, I mean, the Washington football team, they're going to have to get this win, Jake. I think it's going to be a long sleep season for them. I do think you talk about that juice and that boost. Think about just the business side. Magic Johnson coming to the ownership piece. I think they have some more momentum than we than we think going into the season. So we talk about this game, what this looks like for them. I'm going to say a two-touchdown uh, two game, the, the difference. I think they're going to be great, but I'm not sure how great they'll be. I know on defense, you talk about sweat and just that – crazy defensive line, I think they're going to get after Clayton too. This is a Houston young man, so he's going to find his welcome to the NFL moment for sure. Sweat's going to get on him, and I think that whole defensive line is going to get on him as well. So it's going to be it's going to be a long day for two, but what I will say is he, he's I think he's prepared for the moment. I think being at Houston, being with our guy Tank, you know, throwing the football to him, I think he's going to find a nice rhythm. Um, he's going to figure it out. Um, but it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long day for him, Jake. And I do think that the Cardinals. Um, I know Isaiah Simmons was traded, and a lot of things have, have changed around for that team. I think was playing linebacker and safety, and for some reason, when I saw that, I had a feeling that they were trying to figure out what to do with them. They didn't know what to do. So I'm curious, you know, what the what the defense is going to look like in regards to the Cardinals and how that's going to how that's going to be and how they're going to stop the football, Jake. How they're going to stop the football? Let's talk about Terry McLaurin. He he's coming up. He's coming along nicely, Jake. I mean, these past few years to see his leadership, to see him step into that role for this football team has been really, really cool to see. Um, and I'm excited to see Jake with just with with the enemy, with him being there. What difference is that going to make? Right. Like him leaving the Chiefs, him going to Washington. We're going to finally see what difference does it make? Did it make a difference? Um, I know when it comes to his personality, I've been hearing mixed reviews. Right. Jake, I heard he's really hard. No. And he's, he's this and he's that. So, how, is that going to show? Once we see these guys play the field, they're going to have that fight, and it's going to show with him. So, I'm really curious, but I, I do have the Washington Football Team winning by two touchdowns. 
Yeah, so we both have, uh, you know, Washington there. Now, moving on, we're, we're staying with the 1 o'clock slate. This is the last 1 o'clock game uh, for, the, for the record there. And I think this is going to be a blowout here. And unfortunately, I hate to say it, but I think it's the same thing we're talking about with Anthony Richardson. C.J. Stroud is, you know, coming to Baltimore, and he's facing a juiced-up Baltimore team. We're talking Lamar Jackson's back on that field. And look, I'm just going to say it right now. I'm going to preface it. Uh, I think D'Amico Ryans is going to have this team on the right path. I really believe that. Um, I have this team winning five, six games this year. Okay, so I think they're going to be a feisty little bad team, but they're going to be in most games. They're going to be a pest, but this is not the game where they're going to be a pest in. They're not at home. They're on the road against a team that's healthy. I mean, you know, Dobbins is back. Lamar's back. They added OBJ who hasn't played in two years, chomping at the bit. You know how I feel about Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely. I mean, the list goes on. I like their offensive line, their defense. I just think that like the, the Ravens are a playoff team. So this is good experience for CJ Stroud and company, but I just think it's too much. Um, so it's good that he's going to fail and learn from this, but I just, I don't see this going well at all. Uh, I'm going to take the Ravens here in a multi touchdown game. So let's just call this like a 34, 13 affair. I mean, I think in Baltimore, th this could be, this could be nasty. This could be worse than what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm being nice. 34, 13. Yeah. And also too, Lamar has the bag now, right? Yeah. Lamar has the bag. He has Odell. He's feeling I good. <laughs> he's feeling good, man. I do think Lamar can have one of the best seasons that he's had. I think his whole career, I think he's going to really turn things up for him. He stays healthy, Jake, right? You see a guy get the bag like that. You want him to stay healthy for a long time. See Odell reemerge, Jake. I'm excited to see that. What is that going to look like? Zay Flowers. He's going to be my sleeper for this game. I know you really enjoy Zay, and I think he's going to really show some people up. I think he's super quick. I think put him in the slot and have him go to work, Jake, right? Give him those quick, easy passes and see what he can do there. And then you just think about D'Amico Ryans and the Texans, Jake. Um, I'm excited to see what they're going to do. I hope that they have that type of season like the Lions have where they turn things around and they got that momentum, that they have that mojo, and now they're the boogeyman, right? They're the boogeyman for some of these teams. So the Texans have high hopes for them because of D'Amico. Just this game, though, I think they're going to get dusted, man. Like I said, three touchdown game, call it a blowout. Um, I think – the Ravens are going to be like, hey, we're here to stay. It's going to be a, it's a long season, Jake. We're week one, but I do think the Ravens are going to have to make a statement so they can make the playoffs. Lamar can stay healthy, and they can make a run moving forward. But I have the Ravens pulling the Texas out by the touchdowns. Yeah, you and I are thinking the same thing, and I feel bad, <laughs> but I think this season will be somewhat exciting for Texans fans to see the future and C.J. Stroud and watch him develop. It's kind of the same thing with Anthony Richardson and Bryce Young. I think we have all the rookies losing, and I think that's okay because most of the time, if you look at the track record, rookies don't do well week one. They don't do well in the first debut. It's not like baseball where you, you hit the, the first pitch you see, you hit a home run like Jason Dominguez with the Yankees. doesn't always work that way, right? You don't always have that you know home run type of play immediately you don't always have that win it takes a little bit of time you're playing the toughest position maybe in all of sports to be a quarterback I mean it's it's insane you got guys running at you you have to be making adjustments at the line of scrimmage you got guys talking in your ear it's a lot so you know yeah. I think that's uh that's an important thing to to mention but here interesting little matchup you got Justin Fields uh, at Soldier Field, Chicago Bears kicking off week one against the Green Bay Packers, where now no Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be Jordan Love. Aaron Rodgers had his way with the Bears, and the Bears fans are very excited to see him out of this division, and rightfully so. I got the Bears in this new look Packers looking offense. Um, I, I don't think Jordan Love's going to be bad. I'm not saying he's going to be terrible or anything like that, but I like Justin Fields' connection to DJ Moore is what I think is getting me excited. I like the defense. I like what they did with the running backs. They go out, they get Roshan Johnson, who we talked about in depth during the draft season. They go out and they get um, free, uh, Foreman. Excuse me. Um, you know, I think Foreman last year almost had 1,000 yards with the Panthers. I like him a lot. And they're not even the starters. Khalil Herbert, who's averaging over five yards a carry, um, is the starter. And I think he's somebody that he's not a, 
big sexy name so a lot of people won't know who he is and if you do it's probably because of fantasy football but I think he could come out and really you know hit a home run in this one and really kind of you know separate so I think the you know adding of DJ Moore the bulk that they have in the running back room Colt uh, you know Cole commits um you know his development there and I like the offensive line now. It's weird. The Bears got a good offensive line. I'm a big Braxton Jones fan. I left tackle. So I got the Bears here 27-17. Uh, okay. I like that, Jake. And I, for this game, I got a three-point game, I think, with – with the head coach of the Green Bay Packers with the floor, I think he's too good of a coach, I think, to have a game extend too far out of his reach. So I'm going to have to call it a three-point three, three point game for this one, Jake. The Bears mission, the Bears offensive line, that screen pass, DJ Moore, preseason game, how where, well they were running out for him. When I saw that, I was like, okay, this might be my favorite offensive line, I think, this year. Because when you think about it, At a, at a high speed like that, getting to their guy to go block for him, right, sell out those blocks, they're usually kind of in the pocket, you know, holding it down. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, they have a different push to them. They have a different why to them. You know, a lot of times when you watch football, you're like, why is the person doing that? Why is the person doing that? But the Bears, they're, they're moving a little bit different with the Edmonds brothers being, uh, be, uh, Edmonds brother being in the linebacker there now, um, coming from the Bills. I think that's really cool as well. So, I do like the Bears on this one, the three-point game, but love. I think love uh, for the Packers. I think Jordan Love's going to go off, Jake. I think he's going to have a great game this this week. Um, there's not going to be the W, unfortunately, but I do think he's going to do really well. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, this um, this Bears team. It's going to be nice to see them turn things around a little bit. It's going to be it's going to be nice. I think we talked about it's like the Bears, it's like the Texans. Um, I hope they have that Lions type of season where it's like ooh, or the Seahawks type of season where it's like ooh, watch out for them. So. We'll see, but I, I definitely have the Bears by three. So we're coming up on time here, so we'll be uh, a little bit quicker moving forward. But the Denver Broncos taking on the Raiders. Cam, I got the Broncos here. Um, I don't really love either of these teams, but I think the Broncos have more going for them right now. Um, I don't love Russell Wilson. I'm just going to say that right now. I don't think it was just a one-year thing. I he, I do not trust him this season. I, I, I think Seattle knew what they were doing getting rid of him. And I think they got a King's ransom for somebody that they would have been fine trading him for half of what they got. Um, and, and they saw what they saw in Geno. And I just think that, unfortunately, I think a lot of it has to do with Seattle because I think Russell Wilson's been tossed around and ragdolled over the course of his career at just an alarming rate. And I think it's going to start like it's it's starting to already affect him if we look at last year. So, um, yeah, with Tim Patrick out for the season, losing that significant of a weapon, I think, in Denver, I'm concerned. Uh, but I do think they get the, the job done in this rivalry game. I have an ugly one here, 2017. Yeah, Jake. I mean, you talk about you didn't trust Russell. I think I trust him a little bit more now, Jake. I think I'm going to go the opposite way for the first time in this show. I think with Sean Payton and Russell Wilson, what Sean Payton said in the offseason was unacceptable. We talked about that until we were red in the face. And, like, let's move past that now. But I do think that I trust Pay I, I trust Russell just a little bit more. I think he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. And Gino is that guy, right? He's about to go on his encore tour. He's about to play the Rams. and about to do their thing. Um, but I, I trust Russell just a little bit more because I know he's a little bit more juice behind him. Um, so I, I like the, I like the Broncos in that. But Jake, you talked about um, a quarterback that a rookie quarterback that you know they don't really do well when they start. But there's one guy talking about Aiden O'Connell, right? If he were to start for the Raiders, that would be the one guy, Jake. I might pick them the, to win. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but I, I think. I think Garoppolo is going to have a solid game. I think it's going to be one of those down to the wire rivalry games. I, I don't love either team. Um, I think both teams have some defensive, uh, you know, things to look for. And I think this could come down to a Jimmy Garoppolo interception in the hands of Damari Mathis to end the game or, or Patrick Sertain. Uh, I, that's kind of how I see it going. And I think it'll set up a game winning field goal or something along those lines. Okay, yeah, now I, I'm going to call it a three-point game. I know uh, the Raiders have Devontae Adams as well, so we talked about that Terminator mask, right? When he lines up against somebody, he's like, if you do this, I'm going to do that. If you do that, I'm going to do this. And so 
And with a guy like that with the Raiders' rush game, I think with the Raiders uh, rushing on offense game and then their pass rush game, right, I think they got some boys on that defensive line, Jake. So I'm excited for, for them to really get down and, and show show the league, hey, we're the best defensive line in the league, Jake. They might have some of the best, best pass rushers in one area. And so I'm curious to see what they're going to do. Um, you know, when it comes to just the Raiders, good luck, Russell. <laughs> Russ is going to be running for his life. I think there's going to be a lot of three-step drop. Um, hopefully they get into maybe some more of a spread-out offense where he can get the ball out of their hands, right? Run the ball, run the ball, get the ball out of their hands because if not, he's going to get pummeled, Jake. And you've got some guys over there um, on the Raiders' defensive line, Crosby and, and Jones, and, you know, these guys are going to get after him. So um, good good luck, Russell. Uh, but I, like I said I trust Russell just a little bit more because of the chip on his shoulder. No, I get that. I think moving on here with the defending champion NFC uh, Eagles, uh, I'm going to take the the Eagles this one over the Patriots. I don't love the Patriots this year. Uh, I like some of the defense. I like some of the pieces there. I really like the Eagles. I think they're going to be back in the thick of it this year, probably in the NFC title game. Um, so I'm going to take the Eagles here in a 30 to 20 type of style game. Um, it's on the road to give new England that credit, but I still, I trust the Eagles. They, I mean, they play it, you know, they, they're not a dome team. They play outside as well. So I don't have to worry about anything like that and the elements. So I'll take the Eagles here on a 4:25 uh, PM game. Yeah. Yeah. I got the Eagles winning by two touchdowns. Shake. Like I said, we don't have to talk about them much. They have so much coverage. You think about the defensive line that they have come from UGA. Those guys might be defensive player of the year. Uh, they're running four three, so they have a complete team. You talk about the AFC, the Bengals being a complete team. I feel like the Eagles have a complete team. The biggest question mark are these new coordinators, offensive, defensive coordinator. How are they going to do? There's new chefs in the kitchen, new cooks in the kitchen. What's that going to look like? But I do think Jalen Hurts. He was the best player at the Super Bowl last year. I'm really excited to see him and the Kelsey brother as well. I mean, come on, man, he is the man. Um, and then Graham on the other side on the defense. Side. So, man, they're stacked on defense. They're stacked on offense. There's just too much that they have, and we don't have to spend too much time because they're stacked. <laughs> They are. They are. And then we look at this game and uh, Los Angeles Chargers take it on the Miami uh, Dolphins here. It's going to be at SoFi Stadium. And I'm taking the Miami Dolphins because I understand that Tua Tagovailoa is a left-handed quarterback, but he was number one. And that's really, that's the big issue. I think people don't like left-handed quarterbacks, but Tua was number one in advanced metrics at the quarterback position when he got hurt. Uh, so I understand it's always, I'm worried about his you know, injuries. And you could say that you're concerned about his health and I'm, I'm okay with that, but you got Tyreek Hill you got Jalen Waddle and I ultimately I trust Tua this offensive line got better this defense got better and I understand the Chargers this Chargers that and I like what they did I think it's going to be a close game but I'm taking Tua over Justin Herbert yeah and I'm, I'm taking Mike McDaniel Dolphins head coach you know what I mean over Brandon Staley I think you know when it comes to Tua I think Mike's done a great job of developing him you see the videos of them talking together having that relationship I think it's going to show. I think they're going to win in so far. And Jake, the Dolphins, they're going to make a run this year. I'm excited to see if Tua stays healthy. Pray to God he stays healthy. (laughs) I hear you there. So we move on to the other SoFi Stadium team that's playing on the road to start. The LA Rams taking on the Seattle Seahawks. I think this one is going to be very heavily favored towards Seattle. But if you were paying attention last year, the Los Angeles Rams lost both games by a possession with Baker Mayfield starting and John Wolford. They haven't seen Stafford. The last time they saw him, they lost both games to him. So I'm going to go with the Rams here. I think Sean McVay, first off, I trust him week one i think seattle is a good football team i think this is going to be a fireworks high scoring game i'm going to take 34 31 uh brett maher the new kicker for the los angeles ram puts it through the upright to win the game uh in seattle okay i got 21 to 24 i'm gonna go this this game here jake's really close i'm gonna go rams as well because last year the rams have to step up we have to take that step forward as in the rams I think I know with Cooper Cup and his hamstring injury, uh, injury, I know that's a thing, but I do think Puka Nakua is going to arrive, arrive. I think Ben Jefferson is going to arrive, and I do think Aaron Donald's playing. Come on, Jake. Aaron Donald's playing football now. So, you know, good luck to Geno Smith. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think the the name to look out for is two two Atwell in this one for the Rams. I think he's going to step up. Last time he was out there with Stafford, they connected on a deep bomb against the Saints. The game completely changed when Stafford left the game with an injury. We never saw him the rest of the year. Uh, I trust two two Atwell in this one. I think we're going to see a big jump here in year three. Uh, moving on, we have the final primetime games here. The Sunday night football game between the Giants and Cowboys. This is major. I think this division is going to be breakneck. Um, I do have the Giants winning this one. I trust Daniel Jones moving forward. I think his development is getting there. I think Saquon Barkley is going to be huge. But the big one here, the big one is that they went out and they got Darren Waller. I think Waller is going to change the offense. I really believe that. And that's not even including my favorite number one wide receiver in the draft and Jalen Hyatt or the fact they went out and got Isaiah Simmons or the fact that, uh, you know, Wink Martindale is their defensive coordinator who I trust there. I understand the Cowboys have provided a lot and they have a lot of talent there. I'm going to go with the Giants here at MetLife Stadium, a score of 33 to 30. Oh, I like it, Jake. I'm going to go 27 30 Cowboys. How about them boys? The reason why I say that, Jake, is you got two elite corners, Gilmore and Diggs on the outside. So I think they're going to lock stuff down and let's not forget about Micah Parsons, right? Talk about Micah Parsons. Talk about Aaron Donald. Not that they're the same. If Aaron's here, Hall of Fame ready, Micah's knocking on that door to get ready to go to him. I think he's a game changer. He's going to be on the line of scrimmage. No one can really stop him. And I think he's going to cause some havoc. So um, I, I like the Cowboys because of Micah Parsons. I think he's going to force some turnovers. And the guys on the outside are going to make some plays. And then you got you got Pollard on the backfield as well. I think CD Lamb. So, hey, man. How about them boys? I'm going with those guys for three. Well, Cam, you know how you were praying for Tua to stay healthy. I'm praying for the grounds crew because they have to, now that the uh, MetLife Stadium has decided to have the Giants logo and the Jets logo, guess what? You got 24 hours. You better get the Jets logo back at MetLife because it is going to be a lot uh, there. You got the Jets taking on the Bills at MetLife Stadium the day after the Dallas Cowboys take on the Giants at MetLife Stadium. So you got to get that Jets logo out there. I have the Jets over the Bills. I think there are a lot of people that do not like Aaron Rodgers. They don't want him to succeed. And I think it's actually affecting uh, their their reputation, their their expectations of the Jets, as well as the fact that the Jets are it's the same old Jets. The Jets are different. They had one of the best defenses last year. They still have one of the best defenses this year. That rotation with Huff and you go out, you have John Franklin Myers, you got Quinn and Williams. You talk about getting Will McDonald, Jermaine Johnson, Carl Lawson. I mean, it's crazy what they have there, but then that's not a mentioning sauce Gardner or DJ Reed. So I absolutely love what the jets have done to that defense. And then you look at the offense, you know, Garrett Wilson getting into year two with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, that's crazy enough. And then Alan Lazard and Miko Hardman, who I think you and I kind of talked about could be better than we've seen. He didn't really have a significant role in Kansas city. You got Brees Hall. If he's not available to go, you got Dalvin cook. So there's just so much to like here. I think the offensive line is the biggest question mark for the jets, but Aaron Rodgers has had to work with worse offensive lines in the past, and he's won a lot of games doing so. So I'm going to go with the guy that's won two out of the last three MVPs and Aaron Rodgers. And I'll take the Jets over the Bills. But I think both teams will be in the playoffs, and the Bills are a very good team. I just wanted to give that the Jets their credit because I don't think they're getting enough of it. Aaron Rodgers, mic drop. Let's just <laughs> let's just full stop there. Now that Tom Brady's retired, you know, Drew Brees is retired. I think there's really only one more goat. I mean, you, you got baby goat and Patrick Mahomes, of course, right? Like let's but at the end of the day, you got the old goat there and Aaron Rodgers respecting. Right. I know the Giants in the preseason game that defensive have been, I was pushing Aaron Rodgers. He's like, show some respect, man. Show some respect. That's, I think, the motto of the year because you still got Aaron Rodgers throwing the football. And anytime he's playing football, you got a chance to win against the playoffs. You just talked about the crazy defense, man. That's that's out of this, out of this world. <laughs> I'm curious though, Jake, the Bills, right? What are they gonna do? Are they gonna is the quarterback gonna run the ball? Is he gonna pass the ball more? What does that look like? I know this past offseason they said, hey. We need you to pass the football a little bit more and run it a little bit, a little bit less. So Josh Allen, what are you going to do? What is this going to look like? Because you're going to be running for your life with this defensive line. So get the ball out quick, get the running game going. And Jake Diggs, I think he's going to have to connect with Diggs this year. He's got to score a lot of touchdowns, make it to the playoffs. Because if he doesn't, I think Diggs is chucking up those deuces, man. He's out of there. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do. I know they got a great rookie tight end as well as in the Bills. So 
Are they going to give him the football? What is this going to look like, man? So um, I got the Jets as well, Jake. I think it's going to be a three-point game, to be honest. Um, you got some heavy hitters, but at the end of the day, Mike drop drop with Aaron Rodgers and get the dub versus the Bills. I like 27-24, but I'll say the Bills look out for James Cook. It's James yeah. Cook versus Dalvin Cook week one. And I'll tell you right yeah. now, I think James Cook is the sleeper running back, whether it's fancy football or just football in general. He is going to reap the rewards of what you're talking about. He's the first Bills running back since the Josh Allen era to actually get an opportunity. I think he's really going to get an opportunity to be a true bell cow running back. And I understand they have Damian Harris there, but look out for James cook can win, you know, as a pass catcher out of the backfield can win as a runner. Uh, we saw what he did at the end of last year. He's my sleeper there, but I'm going to take the jets in this one and that is going to do it. So we did it. It was, it was a lot, but we, we previewed every game and we will be recapping every game next week, uh, giving our thoughts on the week and, you know, everything. But uh, we appreciate you guys being in here. You can go follow Cameron Lynch at Cameron Lynch 50. You can follow me at JK Bogan on Twitter. And uh, until next time, guys, you guys take care. And special thanks to Bet Online and Underdog Fantasy, who are sponsors of the show. Later, folks.